One of the quickest and most efficient ways to farm money and quest items in Tarkov is to run the statue, electronic, and weapon spawn locations and interchange on a specific route focusing on getting in and out as fast as possible. In terms of what to bring, you're going to want to maximize your carrying potential as much as possible. Bring the largest backpack you can buy or trade for, whether that be an MBSS, a scav backpack, a tri-zip, or an attack tip. When it comes to tactical rigs, the larger ones can become really expensive, and black rocks and ABSs can be found on most scavs you encounter, but if you'd like to bring your own, bring the largest one you can afford. We're also going to consider meds to be mandatory since 50% of the time they're used to extract safely, and a blocked out leg at the start of your run without pain colors would result in a restart. Which nobody wants, waste of time. However, you can bring whatever gun you like. This route focuses on safe routes and efficient farming, so we're going to be avoiding PvP as much as possible. But don't forget, most likely you'll be running into other low-geared PMCs or scavs, so plan accordingly. Now we're going to be looking at the map of the first floor mall and look at the optimal routes. The green dotted path represents the safest and quickest route hitting each of the major key loot points on the first floor, and the yellow path represents optimal routes that will lead to more crate spawns but at the cost of added time to your rig. For this video, I'll start the route at the southeast entrance to the mall. First, we stop by the first four weapon chests at the top of Goshen Ramp, nicknamed Four Chest. The goal from here is to run through the back of Goshen, stopping by an additional four weapon chests on the way to the center of the mall. The first chest will be located in a car outside, but the other three will be located inside in close vicinity to each other. Then run through the center of Goshen past the tents until you see escalators, and then hook left running towards the general store. From here you can take the optional yellow route down the ramp for two additional weapons crates, coming up back through Rasmus and Anadik for two more, and then rejoining the green route to Mantis. From here you'll want to continue through the mall until you find yourself at the side entrance to Idea, at which point you can take the yellow optional path down the escalators to your left for two additional weapons crates and then coming back up to start looking for statues. You'll then enter Idea looking for statues, checking every bookshelf, entertainment center, and table you can find for statue spawns. These places to loot an Idea are generally referred to as stalls, and the stall nearest to the Idea offices generally spawns a lion. Then you'll want to run through the Idea offices for electronics on the shelves and in computers, and then simply run out of the front of Idea. Both the green and yellow paths leading outside Idea and towards Northwest indicate the path from the mall towards Extract. If you find yourself cut off or with bad loot, you can instead go from Rasmussen to the Dom Furniture Stop through Ollie into the back offices. Then trace the side of Ollie staying within the shadows of the shelving until you reach the hallway, and then from there go into the front offices of Idea and loot all of the computers. From there, head towards the center of the mall, rejoining the yellow path into a deke, and then from there into Brutal and the National. Inside of the National, there are a total of four cabinets that have a chance to spawn rare electronics and tradable items such as Bitcoin. Then, continue through and loot Mantis, heading again towards the Idea side entrance to the mall. Again, you will be checking all of Idea for every single possible statue spawn in the bookshelves and on tables, remembering that both horses and lions seem to glow from a distance, but cats can only be seen by about a few feet away. And again, simply run for extract. I ran the route 8 times online without dying and took the 3 runs I felt to be representative of average loot halts. The first one was the lowest of the bunch, resulting in 155.9k in 11 minutes and 22 seconds spent in raid. The second run resulted in 250.5k from 14 minutes and 20 seconds. And the third run was a little bit better, coming in at 266.6k, made from 13 minutes and 56 seconds spent in raid. Looking at the average of these values, we see that the average ruples made per run is 224,330 ruples, and the average time spent in raid is 13 minutes and 21 seconds. Also, the average value per backpack slot is 6.44,000, and the average ruples made per hour is a little over a million, not taking into account time spent getting into a match or managing your stash. The backpack you decide to bring in will obviously be the primary factor of your loot value. It is common for lower level players to bring in an MBSS, which would result in 103.04 thousand per raid, or 467.8 thousand per hour. 
And then once you get to Ragman level 2, you can start buying the Scav Backpack, which would result in 128.8 thousand per raid, or 584.75 thousand per out. Level 3 Ragman yields the Trizith, which would result in 193.2 thousand made per raid, or 877.1 thousand made per hour. Finally, for those lucky enough to have Ragman level 4, you can continuously buy the Attack 2 backpack, which can hold 225.4 thousand ruples per raid, or 1.023 million ruples per hour. And finally, after gathering all of your loot, it is time to sell. The general trader rotation begins with Therapist. Items like electronics, meds, and dog tags will always go to her for their highest value. Next, you'll want to sell most gun mods, armors, and other miscellaneous items to Skier. Any gun parts you can't sell will then go to Mechanic or Peacekeeper if you prefer dollars. Both pay similar amounts for most items. Items that then can't be traded to Mechanic or Peacekeeper will then go to Proper, and if not to him, then to Ragman. Consider Fence to be your last resort for buying and selling items, and only go to him if no other trader will buy your item. And final point, check your traders regularly for new and or changed trades as new ones seem to be showing up weekly.